Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Marconi. This one is called TF1245 Circuit Magnification Meter. It's also a uh, resistor, inductor, capacitor and Q meter. The manual says this instrument could be from 1969, but I think this one is from 1974, just like the oscillator I played with in the previous video. What do you think about the top here? That is one sad, sad view. It looks like an elephant walked on this one. But this is just what happens when some absolute muppets throw out stuff. Yeah, this one was thrown out and uh, saved from the dumpster. But the front here is nice and straight. We don't have any glass breaked, uh, broken or anything like that. All the switches and knobs, everything here kind of looks like it's working. So I need to um, start my deep, deep investigation before I dare to power this up. I don't know what kind of lock is this. Oh, oh, this make a big dent in the top plate. Didn't even screw up the back and it didn't touch the meter. It didn't touch the main input transformer. Of course, this side here is a bend, but I think I should be able to bend this up again and make it nice and straight. Wow, man, I am lucky today. And that will be three of the four tubes um, you see here. This thing, uh, yeah, consists of uh, four tubes and they are in a nice little list in the manual. Uh, where you can see we got two uh, voltage regulator tubes and uh, we got uh, also an ECC82 and we got a uh, diode. We also got some really special fancy smancy diodes down here. And what you see here will be four CS2A diodes. So if you remember earlier in the video, how bad it really looked. I don't know. What do you think about this? I'm quite happy about this result. It was really, really badly, badly bended. I almost made the holes match, but I think I just have to push. See here. It's almost flat. See, I just need to push this a little bit further out and then I should be able to, uh, yeah, assemble it again. Just push this. But that will probably be able to fit. So, yes, I feel that I could probably power this thing up. So I got it more or less up and running. However, nothing is working. I tried with external signal generator on input one and two, all the different frequency uh, ranges and level ranges. Uh, I tried to connect a lot of different stuff on it here. There's just absolutely no response whatsoever. So I think that the, probably the first uh, special rectifier diode, that is the detector, uh, rectifier diode is probably not working because I got all the voltages seems to be all right here and I also got um, this is a differential amplifier that one here um, the ECC 82 tube and we got all the voltage regulators they are nice and shiny like that and when they are this uh, nice and bright I also know that the voltages are within a uh, normal range. Uh, I can of course measure this in a minute, but that is, uh, that is just how it is all the time. 
and I can hear that the transformer is humming real loud, probably from this uh, hard fall. And I got a, a tiny little response here on the Q range, Q multiplier, nothing. Yeah, that is really bad. But at least I will show you a lot of really, really cool mechanical solutions in this unit. Quite a lot of adjustments done on all these potentiometers. Nicely located and nicely numbered for easy identification. So all that I really like. Here's another one. <laughs> Quite cool uh, location for that. All the resistors and uh, yeah well this is a lot not a lot of electronics in this unit all the real smart is done in this cabinet but here is the first little detail i really want you to see look in the middle of the picture this piece of metal here there's a thin thin can you see what's happening here this is the coupling, a super zero slip coupling that goes from this angle to that angle instead of, yeah, they could have used a many different solutions, but this one is definitely super good for anti-slip. I'm going to love this. Look at that coupling. How nice is this? And then look at the fine adjustment. Can you see it's also affecting the main shaft that goes in here, right? So, I really love mechanical solutions like this. It's just absolutely nice. Yeah, let's, uh, let's look in here. I'm trying to figure out exactly why this is not working. I thought it was this uh, diode. So this is the pickup diode uh, V4. I think they call this uh, EA52. So EA52 is a very nice and special diode. And look, we've got some thin wires here that is connecting down here. I will see if I can figure out how to mount this again. And then the tip of the diode goes down here and this is the transformer for the filament. This diode got individual filament here and I lifted one of the filament wires just to verify that we do have a um, more or less um, realistic resistance in the filament so it's not completely open here so hmm. I will try and see what I can do. It's really beautifully designed, this uh, unit here. So here is this nice EA52 diode under a little test. I found a um, data sheet and uh, I can see the, uh, the heater is 6.3 volts, uh, 300 milliamps. And the diode voltage should be around maximum 5 volts, a couple of milliamps. So this is what I'm testing here at uh, DC. So this is the forward voltage is uh, 4 point something. And I just set the DC current very, very low. And then I turned on the, the filament and now it is stabilizing here at like 1 milliamps or something like that. So I think that this uh, diode here is working. I find it a little bit fascinating. This diode can do one gigahertz. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I was sort of thinking I had it, but no, I don't. All the tubes are back in. I even changed the ECC82. To a brand new one, well, not a new one, but one with absolute perfect, perfect top class parameters, and it's still the same. I know my detector diode is 
working, uh, at least at DC, I do get a little bit low filament voltage out of the filament transformer when it is running. So that could perhaps be the problem. Um, the transformers, we got three of them running in a little bit of a special system here. And uh, that is probably what is causing my problems. I also suspect the very special um, CS2A diodes down here to be um, to blame. So I'm going to pull them out and do some measurements on those. But I think this video has already gotten a little bit out of hand and way too long and boring. I think that I showed already more or less all this unit consists of and what it is doing. And uh, there isn't really a lot more to talk about. Stuff don't really need to end in a happy, happy ending. Yeah, it's working and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to show how this is designed, how it is made and how nice and beautiful all the nice and fancy uh, electrical details and mechanical details and all that kind of things. And I think that this is already in this video, so I think that I will call it an end when this video is, uh, yeah, it is definitely over for now. And I hope you had a little bit of fun anyway, even it didn't end with a super, super happy, happy um yeah i'm not super happy about that but <laughs> it's just i think my score is 19 out of 20. i do solve them i do fix them i do find the problems and i do get super excited and happy and get a lot of pleasure out of working and testing with uh, funny funny old equipment but that just didn't happen today I hope you had fun anyways. See you around. Bye.